Today, we have an exciting project in store for you. In this video, we will be learning how to build a base reactor controller, commonly known as the base reactive LED light. What's special about this circuit is that it's designed specifically for 230 volt LED lights, ensuring a safer and more efficient method of operation. So, without further ado, let's dive into the details and learn how to construct this amazing project step by step. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm excited to show you how to build your very own DIY base light reactor, also known as a base reactive LED. The base reactive LED setup is incredibly popular because it enables you to connect an LED strip directly to your speakers or subwoofers, creating stunning synchronized visuals that dance to the beat of your music. However, there are some limitations when directly connecting the LED strip to your subwoofer, as it can cause your audio system driver to fail. Another option is to build the base reactive LED using a wireless method. This circuit helps you drive the LED wirelessly, although it may not perfectly capture the base frequency. But don't worry, because in today's video, I'll be showing you how to build a base reactive LED driver that overcomes these limitations. The best part is that you can use a 230 volt LED directly with this driver, which means the LED will react to the base frequencies. Taking it a step further, imagine adding 230 volt LED to your home's false ceiling lights. Now, when you watch a movie or listen to music, the bass frequencies will bring the lights to life, creating a truly stunning visual experience. Before we deliver into the project, let me provide a brief overview of the circuit. The circuit we'll be using is based on the popular IC, the Timer IC555. This IC is widely known and used in various applications. Specifically, we'll be utilizing a modified version of a circuit called the Timer IC 555-based light detector circuit. This circuit helps detect the presence of light and triggers the output LED accordingly. To convert this light detector circuit into a base reactive LED controller, we'll be making a few modifications. In the modified circuit, I've added a red LED light. This LED is placed in front of the light-dependent resistor, LDR. It's important to insulate the LED and LDR using heat shrink tubing to ensure that external light sources don't interfere with the LDR's detection. The positive terminal of the LED is connected to a 1 kilo resistor, while the other end of the resistor and the LED's negative terminal are connected to the sound system speaker or subwoofer. This slight modification allows us to achieve the base reactive effect. To switch the 230 volt LED lights, I've incorporated a BT136 SCR by placing the LED in front of the LDR, we can reduce the load on the sound system's drivers. Additionally, using the BT136 SCR ensures that the AC voltage does not reach the speakers or subwoofer connected to the audio source. The switching method is quite simple. The output lights are only triggered by the light source and don't have any direct contact with the audio system. Please note that this circuit operates at 230 volt, so it's crucial not to touch the circuit or its output. If you're using a DC LED light setup, such as an LED strip, you'll need a 12 volts, 2 ampere adapter to power the output. I have two circuits to share with you. The first circuit is designed for connecting DC LED strips and operates on a 12 volts 2 ampere adapter. In this circuit, I have used only one NPN transistor. However, if you plan to use a large number of DC LED strips, you can increase the number of NPN transistors accordingly. Moving on to the second circuit, it is specifically designed for operating 230 volt LED lights. To power this circuit, you must use a transformer-based power supply. Switching mode power supplies SMPS are not suitable for this circuit. A 9-volt 500 mA transformer is sufficient for this purpose. In terms of the test circuit, I haven't used any regulator IC. Instead, I have connected the base reactive controller to my bench power supply, which is fixed at 5 volts. Now, it's time to put the circuit to the test. The base reactive controller consists of three wires, 
red and brown wires connected to the bench power supply, which requires only 5 volts. The green and blue wires are directly connected to the subwoofer. Lastly, the orange and yellow wires are connected to the AC 230 volt LED light. The LED light I used is commonly used for decorative purposes in false ceilings, but for testing purposes, I only connected one LED. However, you can easily connect more LED to the circuit. I have connected to my bench power supply. To begin, I will set up the power supply to provide 5 volts, but it's worth noting that this circuit can also handle 12 volts without any issues. Additionally, I have connected an AC 230 volt LED to the setup, and lastly, there is a direct connection to the subwoofer. Please ensure that you do not touch any of the components within this circuit as it operates with a 230 AC voltage. It is crucial to exercise caution due to the high voltage involved. Additionally, keep in mind that the output load of this circuit is also 230 volts. Now, let's play some music and put the circuit to the test. Initially, I will play only the bass frequencies, and as expected, the LED reacts exclusively to the low frequency bass signals. Next, I'll gradually increase the volume of the side channel speakers. As the sound fills the room, the bass reactive controller works its magic. That's it for today's project. One important thing to note is that when connecting this bass reactive controller, I recommend connecting it to the subwoofer, a home theater, or an amplifier. This way, the LED lights will react specifically to the bass frequencies, creating a mesmerizing visual experience while watching movies or enjoying your favorite tunes. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below or contact me in WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is provided in the video description. Please note that I can only respond to messages, not calls. I am ready to reply anytime. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting projects like this. Stay tuned for our next video, and until then, happy building!